The only thing better than explosions is lots of explosions. That's right, before modern warfare, before black ops, before world at war, before Call of Duty 3, there was Call of Duty 2, Big Red 1. Not to be confused with Call of Duty 2. They are two completely different games. Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1, released in 2005, is available for GameCube, PlayStation 2, and the original Xbox. The version we're watching here played on an Xbox 360. The game follows the famed United States 1st Infantry Division, nicknamed the Big Red 1. As they fought their way through Africa, Italy, landed on D-Day, and continued through France and Germany in World War II. And thanks to some military channel footage with voiceover by Mark Hamill, combined with some maps, the game does an excellent job of actually telling the story of the Big Red One. Resistance or not, we got an airfield to secure private. So unlike the other games in the series where you're jumping around from battle to battle with different soldiers, in this one you're primarily playing as one guy. Occasionally as someone else in an airplane, but for the most part you're one soldier throughout the entire campaign. Which, in my opinion, works better for storytelling. In fact, on the whole, Big Red 1 feels more substantial and worthwhile than most shooters. Sure, it's a first-person shooter filled with explosions and gunfire, but it doesn't seem to focus on the violence, per se. It's actually doing a decent job of giving a history lesson, or at the very least, sparking some interest in the events that happened, all the while delivering a solid, well-made video game from developer Treyarch, more commonly associated now with World at War and Black Ops. In fact, this whole game feels like a rough draft of World at War, so fans of that game really need to play this one. It's nowhere near as intense. And because it was made for the previous generation of game consoles, it's not as technically dazzling or fast. But it's an excellent story and an excellent video game. If you're a fan of the Modern Warfare series, you may not enjoy this one as much because it's a lot slower and, uh, frankly, easier because the enemy AI really isn't all that great. But those who enjoyed the World War II-based Call of Duty games should definitely give this one a play. It's really easy to find and extremely affordable. Big Red 1 originally had multiplayer. I wasn't able to test that for this review. I got sucked into the single-player campaign, which is uh, easily worth the asking price of this game these days. The whole game has a very World War II movie feel about it, more so than the newer shooters, and it seems like every chance you get you'll be manning some turret gun somewhere. So the gameplay never gets stuck in one rut, it's always constantly changing and very interesting. While Treyarch may have outdone themselves with Call of Duty World at War, this one is no less impressive even though it may not be as fast or visually stunning. It's Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1, even though the title may be a bit confusing, because it's not at all like Call of Duty 2, which I previously reviewed for Xbox 360. That's a popular game for PC and 360. Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1 packs an entirely new experience, and the fact that it is playable on the 360 is a nice touch. So for the cost of lunch, pick up Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1 and go for the Collector's Edition, or Special Edition, whatever they call it. It's got some interviews and cool stuff in there. Nice game. I'd like to see them bring the series back to this kind of stuff. But in the meantime, you can play this one. But if you're used to shooters, just set the difficulty to hard.